Yeah. So hello, my name is Sebastian Springer. I work at Jakobs University Bremen in Germany. My name is Esam Abarus. I'm a PhD student in Sebastian's group. Yeah. So we thought we would tell you today about an especially exciting paper that we just published in the European Journal of Immunology. Yeah. Um, in this paper, actually, we uh, uh, check two human class one alleles, HLAB2705 and O9. And uh, one of these proteins actually is reported to be uh, related to uh, the uh, um, ankylosis spondylitis disease. Uh, in our paper, we combine MD simulation with different other uh, experimental assays in order to check of the reason of the difference between these two uh, uh, proteins. Yeah. So uh, all um, MHC class 1 molecules are first uh, um, assembled and folded in the endoplasmic reticulum and this, this happens with the help of a bunch of chaperones called the peptide loading complex. And the most interesting of these chaperones in many ways is a protein called tapasin. And this tapasin protein is required for MHC class 1 molecules to uh, bind optimum peptides, which means peptides that bind really tightly. And now the thing that interests us is that some of these uh, MHC class 1 allotypes, there are very many of them, some of these class 1 allotypes, they require tapasin really to bind peptides and go to the cell surface, and other class 1 allotypes really don't. Yeah? And we were wondering why that is the case. Yeah, I'm taking uh, HLAB2705 and O9 as an example. Um, we suggest that uh, by following the sequence and the structure of the binding group of class 1, um, we can actually encode for the tapasin dependency um, uh, of class 1. This is an upper view of the binding group of both proteins. And as we see here, the HLAB2705 has a negatively charged aspartic acid at position 116, while it's a positively charged histidine in HLAB2709. And actually, we don't understand how such a difference in one amino acid could be the reason of different behavior of these proteins inside the cell. And to check the effect of such a difference in one amino acid on the flexibility of the binding groove, we studied both proteins using molecular dynamic simulation. As we see here, for each protein, we simulated both peptide bound and peptide free form. When the peptide is bound, both proteins show a stable binding groove, while when the peptide is absent, B2705 shows an increased flexibility, especially at the F pocket region, while B2709 shows a stable binding groove similar to that of the peptide bound form. Based on this, we think that B2705 needs a chaperon protein tapasin to bind peptides in the endoplasmic reticulum. And to check this experimentally, we used the microscopy technique to study the tapasin dependency of both proteins to bind peptides and go to the cell surface. As we see here, the B2705 protein is retained in the endoplasmic reticulum, while the majority of the B2709 is seen as a green signal on the cell surface. So if you check our paper, you find more evidence, uh, experimental and theoretical, for this correlation. Yeah. And what I like most about this paper, I think this I have to say at the end, is that it's this great interdisciplinary approach. We have the molecular dynamic simulations and we have all sorts of different laboratory experiments. And in the end, it all fits together into this one big picture of the TAPS independence, the molecular mechanism of TAPS independence of uh, B2705. So if, when you're reading our paper, you have any questions, drop us a line. It'd be nice to hear from you.